Um, well, we're, only, we're the first city, let's put it that way. New Orleans is also seriously affected, uh, almost for the same reason people congregate. There are a lot of people here. And the virus came in from Europe with a lot of European travelers from, uh, from Spain and from Italy, which predominantly. Uh, the virus came from China into Europe. It got started sooner. And then this was a favorite point of landing for, uh, for Spanish and uh, it Italian visitors. And they brought it here. I was just talking to Ian Lipkin, who's spoken many times. And he was warning exactly what you have to do. He and I both understand what's happening in China. I was there. He was there. I have a lot of I have offices there. I understand what they're doing. I watched what my friends and workers have to do. I, I'm managing two offices in China and one in Singapore. And uh, I can see what you have to do if you're going to contain this. There are three things you have to do to control this if we want to get back to work. You got to identify people. You've got to I you've got to. Uh, contact trace them so you know who they're and then what nobody talks about is what i call the forbidden q word you've got to quarantine those exposed and you got to quarantine them in isolation not like chris cuomo at home who infected his wife and child who could have infected gosh knows how many people right you've got to isolate them that's there's two choices either you stamp it out quickly or like you climb to the top of a mountain and you climb right back down, or you climb to a mesa and you're looking at a very distant downslope. You don't know how far away it is. That's what we're doing right now. Maybe we'll be at a gradual drop downslope, but it's not gonna be a sharp downslope unless you really isolate the people who are exposed. That's something mm -hmm. that nobody is willing to even think about or talk about yet. Well, you've, you, I don't know if you watched the Brian Williams show last night, the two hours. Everybody talked, but I want you to think about it. You never heard the quarantine word. They said there are two things we have to do. Test and contact trace. Well, what do you do with those people you find? They didn't say that. Nobody. I kept banging on my poor wife. They're not saying quarantine. They're not saying quarantine. Those idiots, those idiots are not saying quarantine. <laughs> poor wife is getting beaten up. <laughs> They're neglected in every possible way. They're neglected from an information point of view. They're neglected from a medical point of view. Uh, they're neglected uh, once they get to the hospitals, they don't have the right kind of care. I'll give you a number to think about. If you go to Northwell and you're ventilated, you have a 90% chance of dying. If you go to NYU Langone, you have a 50% chance of dying. What happens if you go to some other place? Even worse. Now, Northwell is not worse in China. That's the numbers in China. Actually, you go to Russia and Chicago, you have a 40% chance of dying, even better. We can do better and people are learning to do better. But that's part of the reason you see such terrible things happening in those communities. And there's a lesson there. Look at Singapore. Singapore thought they solved the problem. They didn't take care of the neglected minorities. And it came roaring back, worse than before. This is a disease we have to take care of everybody. And the same is true for neglected countries. What does China do today? If you are in China or Singapore, you cannot come into that country if you're a foreigner. And if you are a Chinese or a Singaporean, you're in 21 day lockdown. But it's a different kind of lockdown. It's called controlled quarantine for 14 days where you're in a single room and you can't open the door. Somebody in a hazmat outfit, uh, outfit comes to get you. And the next 21 days, you can do home or next uh, uh, either one or two weeks, depending where you are, you can do home quarantine. Okay. What will that do to our economy if we don't solve this problem for the world? Nobody comes to the United States. Is that what we're talking about? For how long? So it's not just minority communities in the U.S. we talk about. We're in a global community today. And we've just learn that more than we wanted to. I think, first of all, I think the plasma therapies are going to protect them. 
And I think these monoclonal antibodies are going to protect them. Because when I developed the drug for anthrax, not only did it cure you once you were infected and sick, it prevented you from getting infected between for four to six weeks. We can actually stretch that out now. We know how to with it, more engineering so that one intravenous injection can protect you for four months. So the first generation will protect you from, let's say, three to six weeks. Next set of in injections, once we develop the drug a little better, might protect you for four months. So that's a good thing to do for healthcare workers. And I think we need to rush those forward as fast as we can. There may be chemical compounds that do the same thing because there are some drugs like the HIV drugs that if you take them before you're exposed or when you're exposed, you won't be infected. We can do that for this disease too. 